Right, let's see how we can model sustainable drainage systems using the SWIM software. So, um, for this example, I'm going to use probably what is the most simple form of uh, sustainable drainage system that we can uh, model or design, that is um, the inclusion of rain barrels. The rain barrel is you know, something like this shown in the picture so generally you know it collects water uh, from uh, from a roof uh, and then there is a uh, under drain and overflow mechanism so what we are going to do is to look at uh, these installed in uh, a number of sites in a given uh, watershed <coughs> So for this, I have selected a swim model, which is already set up. Uh, so uh, we have two catchments here. We are going to retrofit this system with uh, rain barrels. So the first step in doing this is um, obviously to, to plan how we are going to design this rain barrel system um, you know they look like this some examples in swim the catchment even though it is a 1d representation of the catchment really the catchment is divided into pervious area and impervious area in each uh, each catchment or each, each sub catchment in swim um, and generally it is possible uh, to allocate some of the impervious area as the suds or low impact development as uh, the swim terminology states there is another way to do this that is rather than allocating a part of the catchment like this you can have a separate sub catchment um, that is 100 percent allocated for lids um, either approach is fine so here the rain barrel system takes flow from this uh, this sub area of the impervious area so generally this means we are collecting water from roofs so a rule of thumb when we are deciding how much of the catchment area can potentially be allocated for this particular lid a roof area area estimation is a good guidance so from that area water flows into the uh, rain barrel and then there is an under drain in the uh, rain barrel and then there is an overflow and we don't have to do any design for the overflow when the rain barrel is full the water will overflow and this water that is either going from under drain or overflow can have two destinations one is that water can flow into the subcatchment outlet because this subcatchment in any swim model each subcatchment has an outlet which is a node a junction uh, so that node can receive water from here that's one option the other option is what we call disconnection that is the overflow and the under drain flow from the rainwater harvesting system will flow back into the pervious area so imagine this as you, know, uh, you collect uh, rain uh, rain water from your roof and then rather than pouring it into the uh, into the stormwater drain you let it infiltrate in your backyard that kind of systems so this is really a disconnection path so you can have these alternatives we will look at it very quickly and one important point to um, uh, get uh, our heads around is how to design the under drain of the uh, of the uh, rain barrel system generally I mean without going into the physics of it uh, in too much detail um, for a sim simple case where the bottom drain is nearly at the bottom of the rain barrel that means something like this there is a drain somewhere here then there is this equation where uh, drain coefficient which will which we will use in our uh, such design is equal to two times uh, the maximum water height that is possible in the rain barrel that is actually the height of the rain barrel raised to the power uh, 0.5 divided by the time to drain that is this is a design parameter if you would like your rain barrel to slowly drain within a 24-hour period then this is 24 uh, this should be in millimeters then you get this in millimeters per uh, 
uh, millimeters per hour but of course this is uh, this would not give you that uh, those units for example to drain a height of 1.6 meters that is 1600 millimeters so it uh, uh, square root of that is 40 within 40 hours then 40 times 2 divided by 40 is 2 so c should be 2 that is how we do that now let's go back to our model okay now we are going to implement some rain barrels the first step in doing this is you should go to the hydrologist tab and go to lead controls and add your rain barrel system here so this is where you centrally define how your rain barrels are going to uh, look uh, going to function so we should give it a name let's uh, call it rain barrel and the type is rain barrel this top can be any name you like actually so the height of the rain barrel let's select about in millimeters in this case because we are using the centi cubic meters per second unit system here as you can see at the bottom so uh, barrel height is uh, 1200 let's say 1.2 meters now let's go into the drain design part so here we need to calculate the flow coefficient so for the sake of this calculation let's assume that let's fire up a calculator to uh, calculate this easily so uh, <laughs> let's assume that uh, we want our rain barrel to be completely empty uh, within 48 hours two days so uh, our height of the rain barrel is 1.2 that is uh, 1200 millimeters so 1200 square root this much multiplied by 2 divided by 48 so you get 1.44 as our let's call it 1.4 as our flow coefficient so it's 1.4 the flow exponent we will leave it as 0.5 as we saw in the equation uh, which is uh, hydraulically speaking it's orifice it behaves like orifice then so that is all we have to give at this stage so there are other parameters here for example the drain delay that is if you are going to use this rainwater for some other purpose like gardening or washing your car or flushing toilets you can have like certain time period with which in which the uh, drain would not work so in this case we are not going to do that so it says zero and the offset that is the height from the bottom let's make it also zero right. uh, and if you are really going to use this water for domestic consumption or something you can even have a consumption curve which is a control curve here so you can do fairly sophisticated kind of uh, settings so this is all we want to done now we have to go into each um, subcatchment and implement our suds which is the rain barrel so c2c subcatchment in this case go there and you can see that lid controls none so we are going to add one and what we have is only rain barrel in this dialog you can add more than one type of lids so for some lids uh, this option can become useful the lid occupies the full subcatchment especially um, as i explained earlier on the powerpoint slide if you are going to separate your lids from the main catchment then this is an option but for rain barrels it doesn't make a lot of sense so area of each unit that is a cross-sectional area so think about this as a rain barrel that you uh, use in a domestic scenario so that's about um, let's say uh, one um, 0.8 meter squared so that's a reasonable size and then number of units now here uh, you might be well served by looking at the satellite map of this area and looking at how many buildings are there and you know uh, this kind of information that can guide you generally but for this exercise we are going to assume that we are going to have 100 units so you can see that the percentage of subcatchment occupied by rain barrel cross section is very very tiny because the nature of these suds for some other suds like swales this number can be reasonably high now um, these parameters are not important surface width for unit that is important when there is a overland kind of flow happening uh, on the on the sides uh, this is a point scale uh, system so it doesn't have any meaning 
but an important uh, uh, number that you must specify is percentage of the impervious area treated. You know, uh, this you can calculate by calculating the, uh, you know, the fraction of the roofs from the total impervious area. So it's like uh, if you have 100 square meters of roofs and another 150 square meters of other impervious areas like uh, roads uh, and impervious car parks, etc., then your percentage will be 100 divided by 100 plus 150, that is 250. Uh, so um, for this one, let's again make an assumption. Let's assume that 50% of the impervious area is treated. Pervious area is not treated because rain barrels cannot do it in, in a simple way. Now, um, here is that point that I mentioned earlier. That is, if we go back to that um, diagram here, so I showed you two pathways. One is simply letting the rainwater, the rain barrel to drain into the subcatchment outlet. But instead, if you want to uh, drain the water by disconnecting it, drain the water into the pervious area, like a lawn nearby or something, if that is the policy, then you need to click this one. For the moment, let's keep it um, the simple option, that is, we are draining into the outlet of the catchment. So that's that's all you have to do. Uh, and at least for one uh, subcatchment, it's a good idea to create a detailed report file. I will show you later what is the benefit of doing that. So um, let me create that file. Let's call it uh, what is the catchment name? C2C, C2C RB. Okay. Right. Now let's do the same thing for the other catchment, C2B. So let's keep things simple for this one also 100 units. 0.8, same. Surface width uh, is not important, initial size rate not important, percentage, is, uh, percentage of impervious area treated 50%, like in the other cache. And we can have a detailed report file, but I'm going to have it only for one cache. And of, obviously, we are going to work with rain barrel. So, done. Done. Let's close this. And now it's time to run this system. So uh, what I would do is at this stage, or I could have done it uh, in the beginning, but I'm going to save it uh, in a different name. So I will call this LID1 uh, rain, rain barrel, right? Uh, no disconnect, rather lengthy name, but uh, that explains uh, what is the scenario we are looking at, right? And then we run this. Um, for this kind of analysis, uh, rather than using a design rainfall, which is which we use usually to understand the behavior under extreme rainfall, it's useful to have a little bit a longer time series, like year or couple of years. In this case, I'm using the rainfall data for one year, so I run it just to show that rainfall data. It is you know uh, it is given like this. In this case, data source is not the time series but the file, and then this is the file name. Uh, so rainfall is uh, given in this file. If you want, you can give it uh, as a time series as well, which is our familiar uh, option. But when you are using a data file, it's, this rain units is very important. In this particular case, actually rainfall is measured in inches, so that is why we have inches here. Um, if it is measured in millimeters, uh, we'll have millimeters. I will show you the rain uh, gauge file very quickly. So this is the rain gauge file. It comes in a standard, uh, a standard format that Swim can understand. And uh, here uh, you have the precipitation amount in inches. So this 999s are missing data, and Swim understands them all right. Uh, for the curious, this rainfall format is, um, let, let me go to help and show you. This rainfall format is um, uh, NOAA rainfall format, this number one. So actually, I'm using 15-minute uh, precipitation data from United States of America. Uh, this particular data file is from Hawaii, so that it has a certain tropical uh, 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 tropical dynamic about it, uh, a bit heavy rainfall and so on. Okay, coming back. 
now uh, we have run the simulation by clicking on this I did it before so now let's look at uh, what is happening I mean nothing much you can see the flow here so uh, this is the flow uh, in cubic uh, meters per second but what will be interesting first is to look at the status report if you look at the status report uh, you can see that uh, out of uh, the total uh, total precipitation of about 900 millimeters about 24 millimeters have been processed uh, by the LID system that is our rain barrels right so um, only uh, about five percent of the rainfall if you want if you don't like this if you want to ha have more and if you have the possibility of having more rain barrels you can obviously go back and change it for example you can have instead of uh, 100 you can have 200 rain barrels let's try that one Two hundred in both, in each cat. Right now, if you look at these numbers, when you run it, they will change. Um, not so much, actually. Uh, maybe the reason is that we uh, we can have a look at it very quickly when you look at the interface file what is going on uh, then we can see whether rain barrels are indeed filling up or they are just wasting space because we don't have enough roof area um, let me do that now so uh, going outside swim let me go into my text editor uh, and open uh, this file that is uh, this one you remember this name we gave it to the so it has created this interface file so I'm um, opening it using notepad um, what you can see here is that indeed when it rains the storage level goes up to 1.2 meters so it's it's not wasting uh, rain barrel space so it is actually using everything you can see here uh, and also you can if you look carefully you can see how the system behaves for example this is the uh, total inflow uh, this much and then the other important is in uh, surface runoff this one so how much water is coming in how much water is going out so so you can see from here uh, yeah first this is filling up and then start uh, draining like this right. so uh, this uh, this shows the behavior of the system Now, um, let's keep this as it is. Um, let's uh, look at our numbers again. So, we have 200 units. Uh, yeah, we are treating 50%, that is what we have. Okay, now um, I'm going to keep this as it is and I'm going to save my file using another name, that is, I call this one, same name with disconnect. So this time I, I will not open it with this swim instance. I will just minimize this one. Open swim again. Okay. And then I open the other file from this. So this is the disconnected version. So I'm going to make it so. So what I would do is, if you remember, uh, to make it disconnected, you need to uh, go into LID controls, edit and say that return all flow into pervious area rather than the outlet okay so in this case it is disconnected now so let's run that one also so uh, basically what i'm doing is i'm um, opening swim three times uh, i did it two times so one one time is this um, disconnected one here the other one is I want to open 
the non disconnected one so that's one two and then i will open swim again and open the original file which does not have any uh, lids so that i can conveniently compare these things open this so we have three swim windows here hope it is not too confusing now what i'm going to look at is um the uh, of course you can look at you can run this uh, this is the one without any lids and see what is the uh, total runoff for example so so there's some lids excuse me i'm going to read them so this is without any lids i will so you can i just before that let's let's make sure that it doesn't have any lids so see lid control zero lid control zero both catchments and how i did that was i just removed the this lid control definition then the catchments lids will go away automatically and then i ran the one i will run it again just uh, to make sure that i uh, ran it at the right sit, right uh, condition okay and then i'm going to go into this uh, statistics report uh, where we can uh, look at for example in this conduit conduit t200 uh, a link click on this one and say plus t200 so i'm going to analyze the flow and i'm going to analyze it as events and i'm interested in the peak flows in each event and then i have to define event threshold let's call it um let's say that any flow in that conduit bigger than 0.1 uh cubic meters per second um uh, as long as you consecutively have greater than 0.1 that's one event so whenever the flow goes below 0.1 the event breaks and the next event will start again when it goes above 0.1 so you can give any small number for this but uh, i will stick with 0.1 and then uh, event threshold is that uh, so peak right so then uh, you can look at uh, the statistics here so uh, what you will see is that the uh there are about 93 events during that year and minimum uh, peak value peak flow is 0.516 maximum is 12.126 uh, then uh, this is without lids now let's go into no disconnect case and look at the same uh, properties maybe we can compare these side by side let me see whether i can arrange it in a way that Uh, make it easy for us to do okay so this one report statistics link this link okay event dependent flow we are interested in peak uh, point one separation time i uh, Ah, yeah, separation time was six in that one. Also, let's keep it same. Uh, okay. So you can see that uh, the maximum flow here is twelve point one two six, and here it's uh, yeah about uh, even the peak peak value has reduced. So you can see minimum value has also reduced. So mean value one point seven two zero has gone down to one point six seven four. So even at the peak reduction, there is some impact because um, this is a storage sud so storage uh, or detention suds have this impact uh, even though others like green roofs um, and rain gardens without a lot of storage will not have that much of a impact the uh, the maximum values but uh, for the peak so this is the peak analysis and this is also interesting you can look at how the frequencies behave uh, for example uh, this is the peak value this is exceedance so this is exceedance probability plot so um don't see so much of a difference between these two but if you carefully look at there should be some difference and you can also look at the histogram yeah so you can see that this 
here it has reduced this way uh, so there, there there are some some changes that are happening here uh, let's look at the disconnect case uh, so here what we do is we redirect the uh, outlet of the rain barrels into a pervious area so any infiltration that is possible will still happen and the rest will only contribute into the overland flow so look at the uh, sorry uh, report statistics uh, link i will just type it this time t200 flow event dependent peak so flow is 0.1 okay so here it is even less you can see that it has further reduced so if you look at the histogram also you can see that uh, one interesting point is now in this case the uh, uh, the small values have been uh, drastically reduced so this this big one has shifted and uh, yeah you can see here very clearly that uh, compared to these the extreme values uh, the, uh, the rare and high values have also reduced for example in this case without LIDs um, this is uh, 1 2 so this is 2% uh, so uh, um, only 2% 2, 2 of the values are higher than about 12 uh, cubic meters. In this case, 2% of the values are higher than only 10.2. So you can see uh, there is a significant impact of having these rain barrels on the system, especially when we have it disconnected. In the uh, not disconnected system, it's not so much. So um, uh, you can actually play with the, the uh, orifice settings for example if you want to have further optimize how they are behavior and you can be guided by uh, this interface file that uh, let me open it again um, of course now we don't know this is the last one we, ha we have run because we have to give different names if you want to have a look at it so uh, i did not do that so i don't know which one this is but you can see by analyzing this one you can see how the system behaves the rain barrel behaves exactly so um so that is how you uh implement a rain barrel system uh as sustainable drainage system in swim